This video is on definitions of different quadrilaterals. Recall that a parallelogram is a quadrilateral that has both pairs of opposite sides parallel to each other. So AB is parallel to DC and AD is parallel to BC. That's the definition of a parallelogram. So a rectangle is a parallelogram that has four right angles. So that would be angle A is a right angle, angle B is a right angle, as is C, and as is D. Another characteristic of a rectangle is that the diagonals of a rectangle are congruent to each other. So BC, I'm sorry, BD is the same length as AC. A rhombus is a parallelogram with four congruent sides. So AB is parallel to BC, which is parallel to CD, which is parallel to DA. A couple other characteristics of a rhombus are that the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. So AC is perpendicular to BD. Also, the diagonals of a rhombus bisect a pair of opposite angles. And I'm not going to list all of the angles here, but one, for example, is angle ABD, which is this angle right here, is congruent to angle DBC, which is that angle right there. A square is a parallelogram with four right angles and four congruent sides. So all of these angles are right angles, and all of these sides are congruent to each other. Because it has four right angles, it's a rectangle. Because it has four congruent sides, it is a rhombus. So a square is actually both a rectangle and a rhombus. And other characteristics apply as well. So the diagonals of a square are congruent to each other, as are the diagonals of a rectangle and the diagonals of a square are perpendicular to each other, as are the diagonals of a rhombus. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral that has exactly one pair of parallel sides. So AB is parallel to DC. The parallel sides of a trapezoid are called the bases, and the non-parallel sides are called the legs. So AB and DC are the bases, AD and BC are the legs. Base angles are formed by a base and a leg. So angles D and C are a pair of base angles and angles A and B are a pair of base angles. Because the base angles are par because the bases are parallel, some of the consecutive angles are supplementary. So for example, since these are parallel lines cut by a transversal, angle A and angle D are going to be supplementary and add up to 180 degrees. If the legs of a trapezoid are congruent to each other, then it's an isosceles trapezoid. So that would be if AD were congruent to BC, but that's only for an isosceles trapezoid. In an isosceles trapezoid, each pair of base angles is congruent. So D and C would be congruent to each other, and A and B would be congruent to each other. Also in an isosceles trapezoid, the diagonals are congruent to each other. Oops. A kite is a quadrilateral with exactly two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. I didn't write all of them here. So AB is congruent to AD and BC is also congruent to DC. So you'll see these two sides are consecutive next to each other and these two sides are consecutive to, next to each other. The diagonals of a kite are perpendicular, so AC is perpendicular to BD. And one pair of opposite angles of a kite is congruent. So it's the ones that are usually along the shorter distance here. So angle B is congruent to angle D. And the last thing I'd like to take a look at here is a little bit of a chart that shows kind of the family of quadrilaterals. So at the top here we have a basic quadrilateral, the definition of which is a flat, closed, four-sided figure is a quadrilateral. Within that there are three basic categories of quadrilaterals. If there are no parallel sides, it's, can be, it can be a kite. 
If there are two pairs of parallel sides, it's a parallelogram. And if there's exactly one pair of parallel sides, it is a trapezoid. Notice that um, if it has two pairs of parallel sides and those sides are congruent, it's a rhombus. If those sides form right angles, it's a rectangle. And if it has congruent sides and four right angles, it is a square. A type of kite would be a rhombus because it does have two pairs of congruent sides, consecutive congruent sides. If it's a trapezoid, it has one pair of parallel sides, and if the legs are congruent, it would be considered an isosceles trapezoid. So in this video, we took a look at all of the different types of quadrilaterals there are, many of these being based on a parallelogram. Make sure that you understand each of these quadrilaterals and each of its characteristics.